Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Rory Reed from RoryReadArt.com. And today we got another time lapse video, recent piece I just completed. Um, if you follow me on Twitch, you would have seen this painted live. It took me about 25 hours or so, if I recall correctly. And um, it's a landscape painting of the Salvador Dali Museum here in Florida. We're going to start off the painting as usual with our sketch and the outline. If you followed the uh, channel and watched any of my previous videos, you know this is standard procedure. As I say in almost every video, you need a plan of action when you're painting, especially if you're trying to do it professionally in order to, you know, get a head start on your pieces because you want to crank out as many pieces as possible during the year. That will make you improve the fastest and give you a nice body of work to, you know, represent yourself out in the marketplace. So we start off with the sketch and then we drop in our darkest values in the shadow areas of the painting. We are full fledged into our uh, color palette that we use now with this turquoise blue color and we're going to keep the same uh, palette for the rest of the year. By and large, I, I still have a couple pieces that I started years ago that I haven't completed that I plan on finishing this year so you will see um, some of my older pieces that I'm going to touch up and finish up that have a different palette than this but you know this is what we're sticking with I love this aesthetic I love these colors and so to keep my inspiration up and uh, enthusiasm for my work we stick with what we love so it's gonna be this definitive palette moving forward and just more of the same here we got our mid-tones uh, put in in the sky and the foreground and that already you know takes shape and has everything laid out where we want it the Dali Museum is uh, pretty much the first major museum I went to um, which is you know served as a big inspiration to see uh, Dali's works up close you know like multi-million dollar paintings right there in your face to see how large they were how elaborate they were served as a big inspiration early on uh, i think the first time i went was probably around the year i want to say maybe like 2002 2003 and um you know just a huge inspiration man the entire museum the entire museum is covered in his work and even outside they have a couple sculptures like a melting uh, bench with a melting clock on it just things like that so just to be engulfed in an artist's world and to see it encapsulated in a place like this was uh, very inspirational in my younger years so I don't really draw too much from his painting style or his artwork but just as a uh, professional you know it's it, it served as in inspiration on that front so so um what do I want to say it's just from the professional front you know as an, an artist who made a living doing art it inspired me to make this piece and a couple other pieces um, that I have that I started back then that I'm gonna finish now but the next one I have up in the pipeline that I'm painting on I'm not sure if it'll be on YouTube next but the next one I'm currently painting on Twitch as you can see too is another Dali piece that I started probably seven years ago six years ago so that will be next on the chopping block for completion just because you know I have um, like I said paintings that I started a while ago that been sitting on my wall I'm like yo I'm just gonna get them done this year man have to get them done cuz can't have them just taking up space on the wall anymore and it it'll help me in my quote-unquote professionalism to just crank a piece out even though I'm not inspired to do so you know it it, it 
that's to me what makes the difference between like a professional and a hobbyist or an amateur is that you get to work even when you don't feel inspired because you kind of know that once you get started the inspiration will come and so I just wanted to get in the habit of painting every day and uh, you know not waiting for inspiration quote unquote because the inspiration comes from me not necessarily any outside influence so I you know as far as putting in the work goes so the big challenge is getting up and walking over to the easel and getting started for the day and once you do that you're essentially forced to come up with inspiration so that's the current battle I'm going through in terms of my painting habits so because you know when you're when you're working solo there's so many other things you have to take into account for example I have to upkeep the website I have to do all the photography for the paintings I have to do all the social media work time lapses video clips TikToks, reels Pinterest posts you know all of that stuff website upkeep uh, as I mentioned before and you know when sales happen I have to prep the piece varnish hanging supplies shipping supplies do the shipping and all you know customer service everything so you kind of get lost in that aspect after a while so it behooves you to get into an actual habit of scheduling painting time and doing that every day will you know increase your skill level exponentially and you know just help you discover new techniques new forms of expression with paint and the like so that's kind of where I'm at now and as you can see for this piece we've come quite a ways in I've got the um, the glass structure almost set in as far as the major values are concerned I got the shadow area I got the midtone area and then I have just one main highlight streak right in the center there as you can see and that glass structure and the building at large is going to be the focal point of this painting as well so the rest of it is going to be left uh, pretty loose as far as like the sky the trees and um, the foreground I'm gonna give it like a loose look to keep it sort of dreamy you know keep it a give it a dreamy atmosphere and then the um, building the highlighted area of the building and the glass structure are gonna be kind of sharp or detailed out as to uh, indicate that that's where I want the viewer to pay most attention to And with this color, man, I just love the high contrast when uh, when using this color. It um, just gives like a, a, you know, like a punch in the face, man. It's really, really in love with this palette that I came up with. So it's largely monochromatic. The color alone sets uh, the tone of the piece and the atmosphere of the piece. And then you use like um, the values to sort of round out the mood. And then as you can see later, I'm going to be adding in little touches of color uh, for this particular one. I used some pinks and some greens in the shadow area. The green was largely unnoticeable though, so the pink is the main one that's going to stand out. And uh, yeah, man, it just it just set the piece over the top. This is one of the pieces I love. I do have a couple more, um, as I said in the last video, cityscapes that I'm gonna be working on that is gonna use the same aesthetic. 
I'm gonna use different colors though. Um, you know, lavenders, greens, some straight up blues like cerulean. And just to give the piece proper, you know, a proper punch. And yeah, man, if you haven't gone to a museum before, I was I wasn't really a big fan of um, you know like large scale entertainment, if you will, like amusement parks or museums and things like that. But going here really opened my eyes when I was younger to uh, this whole art world. And like I said, just the business of it. You know, when you walk in, there's a gift shop with all his prints. And then you go upstairs and you see his uh, works laid out professionally with the lighting. And then they all had like an, uh, tour guides there. And you, if you didn't want to go on a specific tour, you could use an um, audio setup that they had with headphones that explained uh, the details of all his work. So it was just nice, nicely laid out super professional and serves as a great inspiration to let you know that you know painting wasn't just like a fun hobby you could have an you could have had an actual uh, career that culminated in a building like this showing your works if you you know were so fortunate and did the work So I always had in mind to get a painting of this museum done, so this was the perfect time to do it, right when I settled into my own style, as you know, Dali has his own distinct style in surrealism as well. Some signature um, pieces of his that stand out, persistence of memory and so on, so once I settled into my own quote-unquote style it seemed only fitting to uh, paint the museum and uh, you know just to give like a nod of the early inspiration it provided me back in the day and so now you see I've defined the highlight streak in the middle of the glass structure a little bit more and I'm adding in some of the tones tonals uh, value ranges in the middle now as well on the the glass structure just to give the eye a little bit more to bounce around in you know when we started the piece we strictly put in the dark areas as you can see in the foreground and on to the left and to the right in the background near the horizon line there in the trees then we put in our brightest brights in the left side of the building and the clouds and from that point on we worked with just those three values that middle area the darkest darks lightest lights just to shape out the piece now we're getting a little bit more subtle putting in some of the value ranges that are slightly above the shadows and slightly below the highlights and so on and so forth to flesh out the piece using a uh, monochromatic palette like this is a great way to do that what i'm doing is basically working from a black and white photo and just matching values as uh, as i go through so It's a pretty simple system when you think about it, but in order to make it look dynamic, you have to, you know, sort of master the uh, value changes and use um, value variances to sort of express what you're trying to portray as opposed to relying on color or, you know, hue. I just, I've just always found this way of painting or this style much more interesting to look at even though even ones are paintings that are not as pronounced as this as far as just one single monochromatic color goes. You know a lot of other paintings you would have one color maybe like a 
natural looking color like a brown or a light brown that dominates the piece and then you have a couple of colors that like punch out and set like a focal point like you know a bright red against that or you know something like that usually that's how some more um, monochromatic paintings go this turquoise green color is very in your face kinda so I've always been drawn to it. I even uh, found a painting I did in high school back in like 1999, I want to say maybe, of a portrait I did in my painting class back in high school back then. And it's pretty much this color here that I use, a monochromatic painting as well. It was just strictly this uh, turquoise blue. I think the one I used back then was more of an ultramarine-ish color but it was in the same vein and you know fast forward many many years later I'm still painting in this style so all the more reason for me to stick to it right flesh it out see where it goes 20 years from now so and as you can see now the glass structure is really coming together is really jumping off the the, the canvas so that all the new little uh, values value changes I added in really making it punch and of course we added uh, the light pink hues into the shadow area of the building and on the glass structure as well and gonna add a drop of that on the melting clock in the lower right uh, portion of the canvas as well once I flesh that out just to tie the um, all the elements in together. I want them the eye to go from the melting clock into the glass structure up to the top of the building down towards the shadow area as well of the building. So that's sort of the line I wanted to draw through the uh, the painting. And I think it worked well. And in Tampa, um, where I'm from, there there are quite a lot of buildings that are like this, with this sort of glass structure. Another painting I have coming up is going to be of the um, Museum the, of MOSI. I forgot the, what the acronym means, but it's I think it's Museum of Science and Industry. Don't roast me if I got that wrong, but it's that's another building I have coming up. It's, it's pretty similar to this with the concrete against the uh, the glass, like sort of circular or spherical glass structure. So that one is going to be good. I'm going to use a bit more color than I did for this one in that. Um, it's going to be another night scene and... I'm going to try and incorporate many more uh, colors into the night sky to see how that works. Have that in contrast with the glass. We'll, uh, I think we'll be good. Yeah, and so this painting is largely finished now. It's, as I said, it's just minor detailing left. And uh, if you're an artist, you know, details are the <laughs> what take up the most time. Like if you, if you scroll back or rolled back the time, this painting was essentially at this stage 10 hours ago, you know, and dropping in little, a little pink here, a little highlight there, cleaning up this line here and there, and then it, with the liner brush, that's what the extra 15 hours <laughs> goes into. And it's easy to get carried away, but I, I was pretty is set on making sure that the glass structure, you know, was the, the big focal point, the, the big eye catcher. So it, of course, required that much time. And it translated well, man. I'm, when you look at this painting, that's the first thing that catches your eye. And as any um, established artist will tell you, you know, painting light is what um, adds most of the intrigue to any artwork. A nice contrast between your light and your shadow.
And there you have it. That's the final piece. It's titled Surreal Abode. It's uh, 18 by 24 on stretch canvas. If you're interested in this, the link, store link is down below. You can check that out. And uh, yeah, I'll check out my Teespring guys. It's uh, teespring.com slash stores slash Rory Reed Art if you're interested in any merch. Got a couple logo tees and hoodies up there now as well. So if you're interested in that, uh, the link will be down below. And that's going to be it, man. Follow me on all social media. All links are in the description. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy. Peace.